Today I'm going to show you how to make a master model. Now, what is a master model? A master model is an exact duplicate of a rigid model to make multiple flexible rubber molds. Now, the purpose for that is so that we actually don't have to set up uh, the original model every time we need to make a mold. This will also prevent the original model from being destroyed and degraded in the process. Now, over a lifetime uh, production life of a mold, the detail of the mold will erode. The release properties of the mold will diminish and you will have to make a new mold. Now, this master model will prevent you from having to set up the model every time and from losing any of the details. So all the detail will be captured in the model itself that you can then use to make multiple reproductions of a rubber mold. Uh, who will benefit from something like this? A uh, production shop that needs to reproduce models and, and castings that are absolutely true and uh, original to the, to the uh, detail that the original model came with will have a benefit from using a master model like this. Now, let's just jump into this project and see how we do this. To start our project, we're first going to build a mold box around the two halves of the mold that we do have. Now, this is a Moldstar 15 mold, and I'm gonna use the pre-cut melamine boards and some hot melt glue to create a mold box around it. And then we're going to apply a release agent to that melamine. This is universal release. So we're casting uh, urethane resin against the melamine board and we will need a release agent to release that. So we're gonna brush some release onto the melamine here. And you wanna make sure that the release agent doesn't just pool at the bottom of your mold. So make sure there's no pooling going on. And now we're going to allow the release agent 15 minutes to dry before applying any material to the mold box itself. Now for the uh, making of the master mold, we're gonna be using Smoothcast 310. This product has a bit of a longer work time. We have 15 to 20 minutes of work time and a handling or cure time of about three to four hours. Do keep in mind that this product is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, so we don't need to use a gram scale for this application. While the shrinkage of the Smoothcast 310 is already low, we're gonna reduce that even further by using the Eurofill 7, which is very important when you're trying to reproduce molds that are gonna be identical in shape, size, and detail. In addition to the Smoothcast 310, we're also going to be using the Eurofill 7. Now, the Eurofill 7 has a specific functionality for this project. It helps improve the dimensional stability of the resin that we're using and is going to help minimize the shrinkage of the resin over time which means that any molds coming off of this master mold are gonna be same size and not gonna shrink over time due to the resin shrinking that the master mold is made from. Now, because fillers like the Eurofill are less expensive than resin, this would act as an extender in this project. That means that the uh, overall quantity of resin needed for this project is going to be less, therefore lowering the project cost overall because you are using less resin. Eurofill 7 can be added up to two parts by volume before any of the physical properties of the resin are compromised. Now, all powder fillers will absorb atmospheric moisture over time and will react with urethane material, such as the Smoothcast 310. If you do experience something like foaming or bubbling of your resin that has filler mixed, it's most likely due to moisture contamination. Now, to remedy this issue, since we're working on a very important project here, and we don't want to have any kind of blemishes in the finished piece, uh, we're going to bake out the moisture out of our filler. As always, when working with fillers and powders, you want to make sure that you wear the proper respirator and make sure that it actually works. And then here is the actual Eurofill 7 product. So you can see how fine that powder is. Now we're going to dispense the material. 
we're going to be using a mix ratio of one part A to one part B to one part of the Eurofill 7 by volume. And then we're going to take this product and spread it out on a cookie sheet. We're going to simply dump it onto the cookie sheet and spread it out using a squeegee tool or a spatula to a nice evenly flat surface. The filler is now placed in an oven and baked at 150 Fahrenheit for four hours. After four hours, we can take this out of the oven and let it cool down. As always, make sure that you wear gloves when handling hot items. As always, when working with urethane resins, you want to pre-mix your part A and part B. We can now go ahead and dispense the part B of the smooth cast. And as always, when working with uh, urethane resin, you always want to dispense the part B first because the part A is moisture sensitive and it can absorb atmospheric moisture if left out for too long in the open. And then we're going to use a drill with a turbine mixer to combine the filler with the part B. So whenever you're adding any kind of powder into a liquid, it's always recommended to add the powder into the liquid and not the liquid into the powder. This is going to result in a much better and much thorough blend of the two components. And it's also going to uh, avoid any kind of lumping off the dry component in your mixture. Just like in the baking industry, you always want to add the powder into the liquid. Now, once we have that thoroughly mixed, we can go ahead and add the part A to the mix. And then again, thoroughly mix using the turbine mixer. Now, we're going to repeat the same procedure in the mixing that we do with the silicones as with the resins. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, even when you're using that turbine mixer. And then I'm going to come back and use a, a mixing stick and actually scrape the sides, scrape the bottom once again. Now, because the mixing procedure does introduce air into our material and the powder itself also contains air, we're going to go ahead and vacuum the gas, the uh, Smoothcast 310 and Eurofill 7 mixture before pouring it. And here you can see the rise of the material and it's going to uh, bubble and then it's going to fall. So that's the rise and fall that you want to see. Once you see the fall of the material, you're going to wait another 90 seconds of it vacuuming before removing the material from the vacuum chamber. So now that the material is vacuumed, we can go ahead and pour the Smoothcast 310 with the Eurofill 7 into our mold boxes. The material is now allowed a full cure of four hours before demolding. Now that the resin has cured, we're ready for the demold process and we can simply break the mold box away from our master model that we created now. And once you have that mold box apart, we can simply peel away the original mold to reveal the actual master model. And here you have them. The two halves are now ready for the molding process and many, many different molds can be pulled off of this model now. And here you can see I'm pouring a new mold off of our master model. This is Moldstar 15 platinum silicone I'm using. And I can be 100% sure that any of the molds coming off of this master model are gonna be 100% identical to the previous one made. The one thing that I like to let my customers know and caution them ahead is that if you are using something like this uh, master model, you do want to make sure that the molds you're casting are all of the same material. So if you're casting platinum silicone, use it for only platinum. If you use for tin silicone, use it only for tin silicones. And another tip I like to give you guys is to actually mark your master model so that whoever is going to be making molds off of this master model knows how many parts there is and how much it takes to cast both halves off the mold. A master model like this is not going to be in use on a daily in a production shop. So it can be easily stored away on a rack for future use when new molds are needed. 
if you got inspired by our project and you need to make some of your own master models, you can do so by visiting any one of our distributors around the world. So, and there you have it, a simple step-by-step -step procedure that we use to make this master model using the Smoothcast 310 and Eurofill 7. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, to keep up with our latest mold making and casting videos, remember to subscribe.